Welcome to Series 10! We have both been reflecting on this milestone, and it is amazing! We have covered 10 games, released 7 episodes of player advice, and talked to so many amazing people, both as guests on our show and through the great community that we've built up around this show. So we, we really can't thank you all enough for your support, and we are excited to keep making amazing people. It's really been awesome. Mm-hmm. We will both be at Acaticon this week, which yeah. is going to be November 9th through 11th in Dayton, Ohio. So you can see us around. You can get a card for the show. Say hi. Join us at our panel with James D'Amato on Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. It is amazing to think that at this time last year, you and I did not know each other. No. And we didn't even manage to bump into each other when we were both at a catacon. Uh-huh. Um, neither of us had been on a podcast, I don't think. I know I hadn't. Had you nope. been on one yet? Yeah. Um, no, I don't think I had been on one yet, actually. I was just a webmaster for one at that point. Yeah, and I was in my quote-unquote audition process for mm-hmm. Shadow of the Cabal. We were going to like meet up and see how we gelled like yeah. I, things have changed so drastically <laughs> from where we were at a year ago at a catacon so it's i'm so excited to see how it feels this year and i really hope that all of you will join us as we get to mm-hmm. experience this whole new world as podcast superstars <laughs> <laughs> we're podcast yes. famous so <clears throat> many so many fans <laughs> right adoring fans i'm sure that they'll adoring be fans. just uh-huh. paparazzi everywhere <laughs> <laughs> we have to hide our faces going to our events it's true, like we'll put on sunglasses and don't mm-hmm. speak to me. <laughs> Just kidding, but really seriously, please do speak to us. We, I have lots of cards. I, uh-huh. We would love to talk to you. I'm, I'm so excited to talk to people and meet people in person. Oh, yeah, 100%. And hey, if you enjoyed our Spire series, just one quick reminder that the Strata Kickstarter has a few more days left. They've met the stretch goals for additional adventures, and this is a great opportunity to learn more about this great setting. I think I'm, they're approaching a goat one. Yeah, there's something about like naming a goat and then Grant and Chris going somewhere to pet goats, I think, mm-hmm. is also a stretch goal. So I'm pretty excited for that. I do yeah. hope that we get pictures of them petting goats. That'd be awesome. Um, but- so if you can help us reach that and just fulfill my dreams of seeing some game designers pet some goats, you know, that's it would mean Might so well. much to me. But. <laughs> If you look past all of the awesome goat ones, there's some really great actual additional content coming up beyond those. So if we can push them beyond that, that'd be amazing. Yeah. As of the time that we're recording this, so it's Saturday night for people that are listening on Monday, um, they, there's 11 days left. I don't feel like doing that math. I guess it's nine, uh, right? Something uh, like that. Something like that, yeah. I don't know. It's like nine-ish days. It's a little over a week. Mm-hmm. Don't ask us to do math. But yeah, that's plenty of time to to back the game. And I think that you there's one level that definitely has the core book too. So you could mm-hmm. just get a twofer and get it all done right away if you don't already own that amazing game. That's what I did. Yeah. Um, Speaking of things that you can buy and or pay for on the internet... <laughs> it's my segue. It's the best I can do, okay? It's been a long day. <laughs> Um, we haven't mentioned it recently, but the One Shot Network has a Patreon. So money from that Patreon goes to support the network, including shows like ours. It helps bring us to conventions, furnish equipment, pay hosting fees, all the fun stuff that comes along with podcasting. If you back at the $5 level, you get access to the Secret Archive, which has all kinds of really cool content um, there's like outtakes from things. I think Alex Roberts reads some poems. There's the system mastery guys being nice about things. <laughs> um, and very shortly, there will be an episode where I do character creation for No Thank You Evil with my kids. So you can check that out at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. It's it's pretty silly. Awesome. <laughs> Well, another amazing way to support us is with a rating or review. You can leave us a review on iTunes or pretty much anywhere you want. Here is one such review titled, Four Successes, a Triumph, and a Triple Threat. This was written by Magical Girl Kira from the USA, who is also a very uh, wonderful supporter in our Discord channel. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has been killing it on the Friday Forges and the Tuesday team-ups. Yeah, she's wonderful. Like, just Uh wonderful. 
Hundred percent. All love right. You. Okay. So she says. Character Creation Cast is an incredible exploration of various RPG systems through the most fundamental of their aspects, character creation. Ryan and Amelia are insightful hosts who go over how each system's character creation process informs players about how the game plays and what they can expect from it. It's also an amazing interview show as Amelia and Ryan talk with their guests about their history with the games they investigate and why they play them. Hearing people discuss games they love and enjoy is a phenomenal way to learn about the best parts of the system, and they're also willing to point out any parts of the game that don't work out as well. For the third and final facet of this wonderful show, once a month they have a special character evolution cast episode, where they talk to a special guest about ways players of all types can level up their playstyles. These discussions are always fascinating, and are a wonderful resource for players of all levels. Thank you so much. That was awesome. That was a really wonderful review. I love mm-hmm. it. Ah, yeah. I love reviews. Say it every I time. Love reviews. I love leave reviews. Us, yeah, leave us more reviews to make us feel awesome when we read them. Yes. Or if you're coming to a catacon, just stand in front of us and review us in person, but only if it's a nice review. <laughs> 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 Walk up five stars. <laughs> five stars. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, with all of that out of the way, we will see you at a catacomb, maybe. And here's the episode. Yeah, enjoy. To character creation cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia, and this episode, my co-host Ryan and I welcome another Ryan from Shadow <laughs> of the Cabal podcast. We are here to discuss character creation for Traveler, a sci-fi role-playing game system from Mongoose Publishing. And welcome to Character Creation Cast, other Ryan. (laughs) We're really excited you could join us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Let's go ahead and start introducing yourself to the audience. Uh, Can you go ahead and tell us a bit about yourself and any projects that you're currently involved in? So basically, the the main project I'm involved in is the podcast Shadow of the Cabal, in which uh, for our first campaign, I played Isawa or Usagi Michio. Uh, Aside from that, we've had several smaller sessions and i've played various characters and i will continue to be on that and we will be starting up hopefully soon our uh new uh, legend of the five rings campaign in the new system whenever that comes out all right so let's go ahead and get into this we're going to start by discussing the game itself and what it is all about what's in a game so the best place to start with this is going to be what is the setting of this game so the setting for Traveler is uh, kind of convoluted. Uh, ultimately, the core book is meant to be somewhat setting neutral to give you just a vague, it's sci-fi. It's in the future. Humans are the majority race. There are some aliens, but it's mostly human-centric. Yeah. Um, if you really want to delve into the setting that is usually attached to Traveler, it's called the Third Imperium, and it is... Considering how old the game is, exactly as convoluted and large and unnecessary and extra as you could possibly imagine. <laughs> but but at, at its core, this is a game set in a, I want to say, semi-realistic sci-fi setting. You know, uh, more grounded than, say, something with wizards in sci-fi settings. Okay, so is it like spacefaring civilizations and stuff like that? Yeah, uh, usually the the assumption is that it's uh, the humans are running kind of a, a large feudal empire. And so while there's a strong, I guess, core emperor, things like that, it's a lot of individually run who owe fealty to the emperor, various planets throughout the system. Hmm. Um, and... and about the most supernatural you get is that the game does include psionics. 
Oh, okay. But you're not going to see some of the the really overt things that you might see in some sci-fi. You know, you're not going to see gods coming down and doing things like you see in Warhammer. So more oh, science okay. than fiction. Exactly. Yeah. More on the hard science side, less space opera. Yeah. Yeah, and and the even the psionics are something that can be completely removed from the game without any any actual issue. Oh, that's always a sign of a great mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's you know it's one of those things where it's if you want it, here's the rules for it. If you don't want it, you don't need to have it. That's true. I always say like it's yeah. easier to take them out than put them in. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So, what sort of things do we need to play this game? Well, uh, you would want the. The core book, Mongoose Traveler, second edition, is what I, I recommended. Uh, there, there are a lot of editions of Traveler. Uh, and for this edition, though, you generally just need six-sided dice. For the most part, you're going to be rolling two at a time. Sometimes, for s- certain things, you're going to roll three or one. But a good handful of six-sided dice in the, the, character, uh, the core book, pretty much all you need. Okay. Um, you can use battle maps and things if you want, but that's kind of up to you. So what does a typical character do in this game? Well, the typical character in Traveler is, you know, a middle-aged person who's cr- under crippling debt and just trying to make it by. <laughs> oh, future millennials. <laughs> but in space. Yeah, no, yeah, so, so like yeah. my life yeah. going forward. It, it, exactly. Okay. No, it, so so the game is, is meant to cover like a lot of different things you could do, but that is kind of a summary of what the the base assumption for a, a, a normal game of Traveler is, is when you build your character, it's pretty hard to not be in debt in the beginning. Mm-hmm. If you, because you, if most of the games you're going to start with a ship and it's not paid off cool <laughs> um and so that's that's one of the big things is just trying to make it by and make all of your payments k- keep yourself running while maybe moving up in the world oh wow i did not uh, want to play balancing my checkbook the rpg <laughs> that's, that's horrible. And that is, oh amelia you are gonna hate this <laughs> I said, uh, I, you know what i'll try anything once it's like <laughs> it's fine yeah. We'll it, it together. Because, yeah we don't the, have to play it we just have to create characters that's true. yeah the the game can be played other ways you could play a full-on military campaign you could be scientists exploring on uncharted worlds but the the kind of core assumption for a normal game is is that you're doing whatever you can to get by uh one of the things i kind of point out to people about this game is that there's, there's, there, no one knows for sure, but the assumption, the belief, is that Firefly was based on this game. Hmm. And so that can give, kind of give you an idea of what characters might be doing. Gotcha. That makes sense. Just trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just, sm- smuggling jobs. Yeah, things like that. Oh, cool. So then, uh, aside from uh, the crippling debt and all that sort of fun stuff, what's, uh, what's unique about uh, Traveler? So one of, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to bring this up to you guys is Traveler, I think it was one of the first, but I, I know some other use it now. Traveler uses a life path system for character creation. Mm-hmm. Creating your character is itself a game in Traveler. There, there's a lot to it. There, some good, some bad, but it's, it's, it is a whole different entity. Um, aside from that, and I know we're going to get into it a little bit later... Traveler, advancement in Traveler is pretty different, pretty unique compared to other games. You don't, you don't gain levels. You don't gain experience points. There are no experience points in Traveler. Oh, weird. So why are yeah. we playing? <laughs> what is even the point? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you can't make your character level 300 and blow up moons or something. <laughs> but still Actually, being you, dead, you, man, you're you, not getting you, heard of those student loans. If if you get enough money, you could buy a big enough ship with a big enough weapon that you could blow up a moon. That's that's the the advancement that's in this the game. Dream. Yes, <laughs> that's blow really interesting. I just want to blow up a moon, you guys. Is that so wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean probably. Uh, what is what has the moon ever done for us? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Tides. <laughs> mm, who needs them? <laughs> okay, so what? Why? Why is advancement special then? If it doesn't uh, use XP, what on earth is it doing? Yeah, so improving your character, and and uh, maybe some of this is going to make a bit more sense a little bit later. You have a couple a couple characteristics: intelligence and education. 
Uh, those two, there's a formula where you add them together. I think it's multiplied by three. I can double check on that. And that is the total number of skill points your character can have over their career. Ever? Hmm. Ever. Um, that that character, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you won't start with that many skill points. You're not going to start with it unless you make a character that's real dumb. Just don't make a character that's real dumb, you guys. Um, Too late. No, I'm just kidding. I would never. <laughs> I would never, you guys. No. Yeah. And, uh, well, e- even then it might be hard to... Uh, but, but, yeah. So, gaining skills is literally a, a, a factor of you have to spend time in character... Or not necessarily in character, but in your character's downtime training that skill. Mm. There's a role to see if you trained yourself enough to improve it. If you did, you go up one. Oh. Interesting. It's, it's, I kind of like the, that, though. Yeah, most of the advancement for this game is actually more based on your economic status than anything else. <sighs> so, like, you know, you make more money, you can increase your characteristics by getting implants, but y- you can't do that through anything other than having the money. This is Amelia's game. This yeah, I know. I know. This is exactly what Amelia wants. That's, uh, <laughs> why do you like this? <laughs> I shouldn't be that snarky about this game, you guys. <laughs> I haven't played okay. it. I just, you know, I feel bad because like we should be like nice to the games until I have should a reason not it. to be. Like, <laughs> like L five R. Even I tried to be nice. Like I, I mean, I tried. Yeah, you you gave it the that old game college was not try. Doing me any favors. <laughs> <laughs> I love that game. Um, no, this is. I kind of like the idea of advancing based off of having to learn things and do things because it's. You know, that's an issue with a lot of games is things feeling kind of arbitrary. Like, all of a sudden, I have this cool new skill, and Mm -hmm. there's no reason that I suddenly know how to sail a ship, but I do. Yeah, Yeah, that's that's kind of something in, like, Dungeons & Dragons that has always bothered me since I was a little boy, was (laughs) that, you know, if my character's a wizard, he may may gain the, the ability to hit with a sword less frequently than a fighter but he still for some reason as he levels up is a little bit better with hitting with a sword why i don't i don't understand it <laughs> he just watched other people do it like he watched yeah. a lot of shows about it yeah. yeah he's never picked one up but suddenly he's a little bit better at it yeah yeah no i, I like the idea uh, although i'm not sure that i i do like that it's kind of a function of your intelligence like your ability to grasp the concept right because that's real life but also like what if you're not it, that it, smart yeah, it, it it definitely has some some limiting factors, and there's. I've said before, I love this game, but there are problems with it. There are some things that I think, if they do third edition, I want to see switch up a bit. I, there are very few games in the world, though, where I I don't oh, go. Yeah. Hey, we, we could fix that a little bit. Yeah. So well, especially and- like games like the longer they've been around, like I think the mm. more time you have to find those things about them. Right. And 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 a kind of what I said earlier to you, Amelia, is is this game is a, definitely a product of its era. This game was made in seventy seven. It and while you know Dungeons and Dragons came out a little bit before that, several other games you know were kind of coming around there. GURPS I think was fairly early on as well. Some of them have advanced to the more modern styles. This one not quite as much. It's it's tried a little bit I think, but it's not it's not evolved to the modern sensibilities as much and that you know for better or worse yeah so it was it was originally published in 77 and there are a lot of editions and like <laughs> in a lot of different systems too like there's a d20 version and there's a yep. GURPS version and there's yep. like a regular oh. version and then i thought there was something that was like fifth edition but this is second edition but then i was so confused <laughs> but then yeah. this one is from 2016 so this it's, is the it's, most recent right it's a yes decently modern game that's only two years ago <laughs> yeah. um, with I, none of the modern sensibilities <laughs> <laughs> I, I they they I get the impression that this one they they want to try to keep with their roots and I get it. Yeah. But but there are some things where maybe going away from your roots is a good thing. Yeah. You know. That's, yeah, progress for the sake of progress is not always great, but like some progress is good. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little bit here and there. Yeah. You should try it out once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, what sorts of things do we need to know, uh, the basic terms and concepts, uh, in order to create characters uh, for the, the Traveler system? 
So creating a character is, as I said before, it's its own game. Um, the main things that you need to know ahead of time as far as terminology is there will be a thing you're going to see a lot. And it's going to be some th- characteristic DM. So strength DM, education DM. That stands for dice modifier. Based on what you have in, say, your social standing characteristic, there's a plus or a minus to your dice roll. And for pretty much everything, you roll 2d6, add them together, add or subtract your dice modifier. So that's, ultimately, that's the biggest thing. Everything else is pretty well explained in in the character creation process. There's things like terms when we're doing our, our character creation. Every term is four years. Your character goes through as many terms as you feel comfortable with, but there are downsides to going to too many terms. Hmm. Um. Yeah, so, I noticed so, like the yeah. dice notations in the book were a little bit different yeah. than what I've seen before, but they were yeah they were explained pretty clearly like right at the beginning that it's like two yeah. D um, yep. is just two dice and the dice are d sixes. Um, yeah, yeah. So they were like, we don't want to write out the word dice. <laughs> yeah, really... I'd say the weirdest one is the D sixty six. Yes, where... so a D sixty six. You roll two dice, and you have to you want to have them be two different colors. You assign one ahead of time to the 10 space and one to the 1 space. You roll them both. It will get you anywhere from, not not anywhere from, but, you know, 11 to 66, but only in the range of, yeah. Right. So there's going to be 36 different combinations. Yeah. So it, it's, effectively. it's kind of an attempt to do percentiles without using percentiles. I, I don't know why they went that route. <laughs> okay. it, it, it's so it's another one questions. of those weird no, things. <laughs> I, okay. All right. It's well, so one of the things you'll notice with this game is they really like having spreadsheets. For almost I mean, anything. I, who doesn't? Oh yeah, no, that's that's <laughs> for me that's one of the things I love about this love game. Love me some spreadsheets. Yeah. And and so it's uh you're going to see them all over the place. That's the way to that they decided in their inelegant wisdom to try to make it work for a larger number of variables or whatever, you know, columns or I guess lines. Mm -hmm. I just like, why not pick a neater number? Just like, you know what? We only use sixes. We're not going to ask somebody to get out a different day. Right. I think when they made this, you know, again, keep in mind, it was originally made. They were like in their mom's basement and they only had a Yahtzee set and like, they were like, Mm -hmm. you know what? That's it. It was originally made so early that I think they might have wanted to differentiate themselves from D and D in that mm-hmm. you only need this one style of dice, which almost everybody has. You got Monopoly, yeah. you've yeah. got two D six. Yeah, yeah. So that that might be what the reasoning was. Okay, I but can't in the year you. of our Lord two thousand sixteen. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, uh, no, absolutely I'm really correct. Up on this. <laughs> that, that's that's another one of those things where they should have just said, "All right." We can switch this You've up. You've had a bit. your time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, okay. Sure, whatever. You do you. <laughs> yeah. And I'm I'm looking uh, at the book a little bit right now, and I noticed that there is a uh, cyc- cyclical flowchart. Yes. For creating a traveler. Yeah, you oh, could <laughs> try to use that. <laughs> We'll, we'll we'll I use it. I dare you. <laughs> well, no, it it it's it's actually not bad. Once you kind of sit down and really look at it, once once you know what everything means, it makes a lot more sense. And and so it's one of those things where it I've I've run this game enough, and I've uh, you know walked people through making characters enough that I I understand it, and I, I I'm here to help you guys understand it. Well, good. That's that's the goal. <laughs> is that by the end of this. You Other guys will be able to will make also yeah. maybe kind of understand it or have decided yeah. not. Nah. Yeah. If <laughs> if people are following along at home, it's on page ten. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. So with all of that, let's jump right into it and make some people. Oh yeah, time to make some people. Time yeah. to make some people. Let's, let's make some people. All right. So one thing about this game is that it very clearly tells you right up at the top that this is a group activity. Yeah, absolutely. That this is not a um, do it at home by yourself. Like this game is designed to have a session zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in fact, it's some parts of it are when we make our characters as we're going through, we are expected to link our characters, some points in our characters lives with each other. 
you know, this happened to my character when he was 32. So maybe your character happened to be here and interacted with that. And there's a benefit for doing that. You get an extra, basically an extra rank and a skill. Hmm. Nice. I do love skills. Okay. It seems to be the backbone of the system is the skills. Yes. Increasing your skills and becoming better through having more and more skills. So you can make more money. Exactly. All right. So it looks like we start with characteristics. Yes. Which are your basic stats, like D&D stats, pretty much. Um, So it has strength, dexterity, endurance, intellect, education, and social. Yes. Um, So social standing, that's social standing. That's basically how important you are in the community or the, you know, are you a noble? There's, there's. There's a chart for that. Yeah, there is. (laughs) There, There is. Yeah. You can get all the way up to Duke. Ooh. Or I guess Duchess if you're, you know, it, it, it's a from its time, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed I noticed going through this game um, almost exclusively male pronouns. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. That's... They didn't fix that either? Mm, doesn't seem like it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, be, be another nice thing to see different. Yes. Yeah. It is, it's one of the things that I always keep an eye out for whenever I look at a new game and yeah, and I was I was just like, uh, I think why? that's funny that you do because I just don't. I think I just tune it out by now. <laughs> like I'm just so eh, whatever. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for the characteristics, these are a random roll. So you have your two yes. D, your two D sixes, mm-hmm. and then it the the wording was kind of weird. It was like you can put them in any order that you want, starting right. with strength. Yeah. So, so I was like, why some... does it matter which one I start with? I, yeah, I, I don't think they – so if I remember, and, and this – I might be wrong on this, I'll admit it. I think in earlier editions, it was just a roll, assign, roll, assign, like you, you do it in order. So your first roll goes to strength. I think that's how it used to work. Okay. And my understanding is that the intention here is to be a little bit more friendly and say, put them wherever you want. Make the character you want. But they they might not have worded it quite right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it says um, to roll them and assign the scores in any order you wish to the six characteristics, starting with strength. I know. <laughs> and I was like, so I can put any number I want in strength, but that's the first box I have to fill in. So I want you to know that I followed the rules, and yep. I did do yep. that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And, and this is actually already kind of where you start, you want to start thinking about what kind of character you want to be. Because once you make, once you do your rolls... You know, if you want your character to be a soldier, there are characteristics that are more important for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, All right. Ryan's, I'm- plural. Did you roll already or? Not yet. I'm going to roll right now. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't have dice here in my okay. hotel with me, so I, I just have to roll, roll for you. online. Or do you oh, gotta, uh, do you wanna- I, I'm on a dice roller. I just, oh, I just hit the button. I'm an internet dice roller. Sorry. <laughs> I do, nice do you- sweet dice noises. Oh, three. What the crap? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what the crap? Start it, Sorry. Start it with nine, and then I got a three. I got a five. I don't like these dice. Come on. I don't know why. This dice roller really liked me. You got to roll six of them? Yes. Uh, six okay. pairs. Oh, that was a good rolly dice sound. I know. Yeah, can you just can we just cut out the thing about me using a dice roller and you just add a dice rolling sound for me? I could. Oh, I just like whacked my <laughs> microphone though. All right, I have absolutely horrible scores for the most part. That's okay. Mine are pretty uh, average, I would say. I I have stories of some terrible scores, and as long as you're okay with your character having a pretty bad life, it can be fun. I'm fine. It's <laughs> fine. You know, and coming from Brian's me... Like, that, as long as they're nice. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. They gotta be nice. Oh, well then, yeah, then you're fine. Okay, I need to find the social chart, because that's a thing. Uh, um, page nine? There it is. Okay, so it only really matters if you're 11 or above to get a title. Right. And um, other than that, there's other things that, uh, like, your social skill influences, I guess? Yeah, so before you assign anything, let me explain that. Uh, Basically, the way the life path system works is, term by term, you decide what career your character was taking part in. Uh, There is a role needed to get into that career. 
so just, just to be able to get into that career <laughs> that's if you look at page 19 i'm so down for this like i know that i'm being real mean but like i'm i'm here for this i want to see I know. how yeah. badly this can go yeah yeah so if you look at page 19 just so so it's, it's easier to see the the qualification that is what you need to roll to get into that career when your character says i want to be uh an entertainer your character then has to roll either dexterity or intellect five or higher and that's you roll two dice you add your dexterity or intellect dice modifier and if it is five or higher you've made it into that career so a lot of them are not that hard but you know if your character if you want your character to be a noble you're gonna want to have a high social standing because that's social standing 10 plus wait so say that again sorry if you so like if i'm looking one it says like intellect six plus Mm-hmm. Does that what mean you, I roll intellect and it has to be above a six? Is that, uh, it has I to be six or higher. Okay. Got yeah, it. and it's and it's what you roll is you roll the two dice and then you add your intellect dice modifier. And so then there's these subfields for all of these. Yes. So what it is is that's the career is the big bold one. Okay. The sub one is the assignment. Uh, for a lot of it, it's you know if if you're a if you're a noble, maybe you work in administration or maybe you're a diplomat. Or a dilettante, you know, whatever. But but they're they're all they all have different benefits that they will give you. I see. So then you have to roll those later. Uh, now, so later? kind of no. The, so <laughs> like, don't worry yeah, about it. We'll yeah, get yeah. to it. No, I, I'll I'll walk you through. I'll walk you through how how it all works. Okay. That's we'll 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 just walk through one really quick. So when you decide what term you want to do, you know, let's just hypothetically you want to be a merchant. You roll to see if you get in. Say you succeeded. Merchant is not a hard one. Then you decide which assignment your character was uh, went into. And then uh, after you decide that, uh, you roll... Well, the first one, there's basic training. So you get a bunch of skills for being in that career. Okay. And then, and then you get to roll what you learned that term. What skill raised or what benefit you got that term. Okay. And there's that's where your assignment comes in because each as- assignment has its own unique table you can roll on. Yes. There's so many tables. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for this. And that, and, that and is one thing that both Amelia and I absolutely love is rolling on tables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and then you then you do what's called a roll for survival. This isn't one of the things you'll hear a lot about Traveler. Mm-hmm. Is Traveler is a game where you can die in character creation. Still technically true, not quite as true as earlier editions. Bummer. This is this is not that survival kind of here survival. does not mean live or die. Survival is basically do you get fired or do you keep your job? Oh. oh. <laughs> That's, That's a little bit different. That's like yeah. not even as good. That's like just sad. It's not like I, I was hoping one of us were gonna die playing this. Oh, it's I'm... very possible. Oh, sweet. Uh, yeah. Just not um, as possible. Just not as possible. It, y- you have to be real, going real bold into it for that to happen. All right, Which go hard or go yeah. home. Go hard or go home. Sure. Uh, after after that, if your character survived, if your character succeeded, you roll for an event. There's a list, a chart of events that could happen in that career. You roll for it. You go with, you know, whatever. If your character failed the survival, you roll a mishap. Something bad happened. And and th- those will all be noted down, and those are where we kind of determine how our characters might know each other. Okay. Um, so with Merchant, let's say one of the events is you make an unexpected connection outside your normal circles. You gain a contact. Maybe during that time, you know, maybe my character is a merchant and made some some underworld contact. Maybe your character is a criminal and worked as a bodyguard for that same person. You know, that might be how we know each other. Interesting. Cool. So you're kind uh, of creating your backstory as you're creating your character. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So so you come in when you come into this game, don't come into it with a character backstory in your head. It's right. not going to be your thing. Because it seems like there's a lot of random chance of where you're going to end up past, like sitting yeah. down and writing down the name of your character. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and then after after you do an assuming you succeeded and you've done your event, then you roll for advancement, which is do you get a promotion? If you succeed, you get a promotion, you get another skill, and then we decide do you does your character continue in that career or is this where the game starts? Nice. 
All right. And technically, we do not have to do the same number of terms. It makes the bookkeeping a little more difficult because then we have to find out if I did six terms and you did five terms, then on my fourth term, what term were you in, you know, to figure out all the life event stuff. It's a little bit easier if, if at the start you just say, all right, guys, once one of us says this is my last term, that's the last term. All right. Okay. That, that's, that's, not a, that's not a rule in the book. That's just my kind of advice of if, you know, it makes the bookkeeping a little bit easier. Right. All right. I'm ready to do this. All right. I'm ready to roll on some tables. Yeah, I'm, I'm I mean, excited. There's some other stuff you gotta do first. Like you gotta I, I, put those numbers <clears throat> in some in some characteristics. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I went ahead and I rolled in my characteristics. And for everybody following along at home, I put a three into strength, five into dexterity, four into endurance, nine into intellect, eight into education, and six into social. All right. I did five in strength. Seven in dexterity, four in endurance, nine in intellect, ten in education, and eight in social. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty average, except where it's not. They're like way better than all of my stats, basically. So I think what I'm going to do with all of that in mind, let me assign these really quick. You're going to be like, someone needs to have some strength and endurance. That's exactly where I'm going with this. (laughs) Can't just all be smart. We need some sort of tank in the party. So let's see. What do I, what did I already sign? Eight, nine, ten. You have to start with strength. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oops, I didn't. I should start over. Let me re-roll. No. No, you don't get to re-roll. <laughs> I see what you're trying to do there. <laughs> okay, I got it. So, my character, I assigned an eight in strength, a nine in dexterity, a ten in endurance, seven intellect, Nine education and only five social. Good lord! I know I rolled really well, you guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I almost wish I didn't, but you, okay. So you could re-roll and lie about. No, I'm just kidding. We are always uh, yeah. truthful on this yes, show. Yes, we would never uh, lie. So now, if you go to page eight, you can see where it says character characteristic modifiers. Those are the dice modifiers. So that's anytime it asks for a DM, that's where you're looking. And so on your character sheet, you can fill out, you know, mm-hmm. if it's an, like, I have an eight there, so that's a plus zero. And those are pretty much, like, the same as the D&D so modifiers. It, if you're rolling 2d6, how mm-hmm. is there above a 12 on the modifier chart? Well, if you're rolling 2d6 and you have a plus one on your di- dice, uh, no, no, so this is, this is there, there are things throughout the, the, um, the life path that can increase and decrease these. Oh, okay. So these these are oh. not going to stay permanent here. So the f- most you can absolutely start with is 12, but yes. then as you're creating your character, it could go higher. Exactly. And as you're playing the game. Yeah. Well, right. less so as you're playing the game. It still can, but it's it's harder. Interesting. Okay. I'm into this. Yeah. All right. So the next thing that we have is called background skills. Okay. These are dumb. Uh, Carry on. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is... What? What this what this represents is where your character grew up. We start the life path when your character is 18. So before that, though, your character still did something. Maybe they were grew up on a farm or something. Background skills are, are those. Uh, oh. So what you take is your education dice modifier plus three. Okay. So for me, that's four. And I get to take four of these. You'll notice that they all are skill name zero. There, in this game, there's a difference between having zero in a skill and being untrained having zero in a skill just means you you roll it straight if you're untrained if you have if you don't even have a zero in it you get a negative three automatically to the roll Hmm. so like if my character takes flyer zero he's trained in flying things but he isn't isn't great at it he's just got like the bait you know where most most of us are on driving cars or something Mm -hmm. gotcha just the base level Interesting. So this is this is this is the first place, and usually it's advised that you kind of imagine what your character's home world is like and base it off of that. For the most part, these these skills are probably not going to be your character's major thing. Okay. This is interesting. Okay, and I noticed that a lot of these skills have like art parentheses, electronics parentheses. Yes. So that um 
one of the places where it's not super well organized because you have to go several pages back in the book. I think they uh, were on like page 17, 16, 17? Uh, 63. 63. 63. Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty close. 16, 17, 63. <laughs> yeah. But so like like for my character, one of the things that I'm probably going to take is drive. And so now I have to pick what kind of vehicle he he knows how to drive. Interesting. Okay, so it looks like the ones that have that have specialties underneath them. Exactly, yeah. Cool. So like because driving a vehicle with wheels is a different skill than driving a vehicle that's a walker. Right. Oh, crazy. This is okay. definitely like a product of this time too, like just yeah, the ab- insane number yeah. of skills. And yep, this is tickling my palladium brain in <laughs> such a fun way. Like all the, I, I love tons of skills. I do too. I just don't like when I have to like do math at them. Uh huh. I don't like when I have to like you know you have like a point buy system or something that really bothers right. me. Well, so it, this feels okay. I can it's handle really, this. Really, kind of like a. Hits that min maxi sort of uh, feel to it of wanting to make the best character you can, but you have so many options. Yep. Well, and also like there's dice rolls involved, so you you can't just be like, I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this. Uh huh. You know, may I might be taking my character to try to go in the army, but if I fail on at getting in the army, or even if I get in, maybe I'm going to start learning melee when I was hoping for shooting guns. Right. Man, this could be a real mess. <laughs> oh, this is going to be good. I'm real excited. I have picked my background skills. So while I everybody else mine. is like, you know, while Ryan is looking through his plethora of choices. I'm almost there. I, I think I've got it. So I picked admin. I picked art. Right. I picked, what else? I can't read my writing here. Uh, carouse. I picked language. Um, is it Villani? Villani? Uh, the one that's pretty much Latin. Yeah, yeah. Um, I picked... Okay, so tell me if I can do this. Two different okay. science ones. Yes, I yeah. I picked science twice. Okay, so I picked archaeology and history. But yeah, th- they're, they're two different skills. They're just under the same brand, you know. Yes. But cool. you only get three... It's three four. plus your dice modifier in education. So if Amelia's so my dice education modif- one was three. You have plus three to education. Yeah. No. What? What? What did you put in? Oh, what is one. your? Uh, Hold on. One. Yeah. So you I should have math at this. See, don't you look at it, it's like basic edition, and I can't do it. <laughs> you guys. That's okay. All right. I. You do yours better. Go ahead and do do better. <laughs> All right. I went with okay. So I put all of my eggs into one basket. Ooh, <laughs> all right. bold. I, I am like going with art, singer, performing, art, instrument, and art, writing. What instrument? I think, um, I was kind of thinking. Theremin. <laughs> Say theremin. No, no, not a theremin. <laughs> a space accordion. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say piano, nice and classy. <sighs> Of all the space instruments you could have played. Uh, I'm just happy we have a space bard. I'm already happy about that. All right. That's fair. Yeah. So you want you want me to go? Yes. Other Ryan. Okay. So guess, my this character. This is like not working for other Ryan. It's not <laughs> working for me. But I feel like bad. I can't call you like bad Ryan on this yeah. show. So my character, based on where he grew up, he starts with athletics, endurance, drive, wheel, mechanic, and streetwise. So he's he kind of was more of a, like a city kid. Okay. Did he do street racing? Maybe a little bit. Just just a touch. <laughs> just gotta get places faster. Yeah, come on. All right. We... Okay. What? Go ahead. I was gonna say if we uh wanted to share names or do we want to do that after the, the skill background selection? When does that usually happen? I don't, know I don't think there's says, a set time for uh that may clear sharing. up our Ryan Ryan issue. That's true. Okay. okay. I have character names. Okay, hold on. Uh, Let me find a random name generator <laughs> and push it a bunch of times until I like the name. All right. I'm adding pronouns to my name, too, in defiance of the singular pronoun Absolutely. in the system. Absolutely. I already got my name, so. I don't like any of these names. Hold on one second. I have this book that's, like, falling apart, but I love it. Because it, like, groups names by, like, style of name mm-hmm. as opposed to... 
Like, there's just a whole section called androgynous. <laughs> oh. Okay. Guest Ryan, what is your character's name? Zach Davy. Zach Davy. Okay. Co-host Ryan, what is your character's I, name? Uh, my character's name is Shiara, and uh, she is a using a she/her pronouns. All right. I am naming my character Campbell Croft. Campbell. Croft. They are they. I, mine is he. So. Oh, that's nice. Wow, we covered a lot of bases there. Yeah. And I do not use my last name at all. It's just Shiara because uh, she likes to be a, a little bit uh, mysterious. She's a woman of mystery. Yeah. Could be. Could also be just the the culture she comes from because it's you know we we could be we're probably from different planets. Oh, that's very but, true. Yeah. Plus, so it, it's it sounds like her culture is very um, artistic based. Mm-hmm. And a lot of artists like to just use their first names. So it could be choice. Madonna, Beyonce, all the important ones. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. If you're, important, you're, if you're important, you're not using a last name. So. <laughs> all right. So now what? Yeah. Okay. Now that we have our characters kind of started, we need to decide on our first terms. So the first question is, did your character go into university or a military academy? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to say yes. Okay. So my character did not. Okay. So so the options, we'll, we'll start. Um, did uh, Campbell go to university or a military academy? University. Okay. So so this would be Campbell's first term then, would be at the university. Okay. So to do that, you need to first see if you got in. Oh, boy. And <laughs> that, is an edu- that is an education role. So you roll two dice and add your education dice modifier. Okay. Oh, man, seven plus. I should probably do this too, huh? Okay, so I got nine. Okay. So I got in. You got in. You have gotten into university. Yay. This is like the RPG version of the game of life. <laughs> <laughs> it really so, feels that way. Just for getting in, there's a list underneath there. It says skills. For getting in, you get one of those skills at level zero and one at level one. Ooh. Your, your choice. Okay. I am going to pick, I'm going to pick a science because I took one out before because I mathed at it wrong. Okay. They're a good old science boy. And hmm, I'm going to do medic. Okay. So maybe went to medical school, it sounds like. Yeah, I'm going to take the medic at level one. Okay. Oh, nice. Do I just... How, then how, where do I put that on my character sheet? Do I just make a one somewhere? These character yeah. sheets are not very good. Yeah, so on, on these character sheets, um, it, it, it's going to assume that for medic, you would just put one now that you have one, now that you're rank one in it. And if you if you gain, we'll get to it when we get to it. If you gain medic again in some ways, that will increase to two. In other ways, it might not. Okay. I'll explain it when it comes up. Sure. It's one of those more confusing things that's just easier when we get there. Gotcha. Yeah. So, okay. So you have picked those. Now you get to roll your event. On the page 15, <laughs> there is an event table. All right. So you roll two dice. So I got a five. Do we add anything to this one? No. No. This is just a raw roll. So All right. You, yep. So take advantage of youth. You party as much as you study. Game Carouse 1. All right. Sweet. They're kind of a party animal. Yep. Apparently. <laughs> okay. And now I'm also, just just so you know, I'm, I'm also keeping notes because it'll help me rem- be able to figure out where I want to interject my character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so now that you've done that, we need to, t- to f- figure out if you graduated. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. Uh, so now you need to roll an intellect roll. If you get a seven or higher, you have graduated. Okay. If you get 11 plus, you graduate with honors. I did not graduate, friends. Uh, oh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that's only four. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so what that means is your term is done. Your character is now 22 years old. Wow. Oh. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and nothing to show for it. We're aging. Oh, my yep. God. Shall we you go got, on to... You got some skills. Yeah, I did yeah. get some skills. I'm sorry. My parents Ryan, are what was so your character's name? Uh, Shiara. Shiara. That's my handwriting is so bad I couldn't read it. <laughs> yeah. So 
You said Fiora also goes into education. Yeah, I, are they... I want to do u- university. She wants to go into university. Okay. So once again, you roll education first. Okay. So my education, I believe, let me see, is plus a zero. So I need a seven plus on the dice. So a 50% chance of getting into university. <laughs> seven. Yes. All right. It. Sounds like you got in. Yes. So, awesome. Yep. Once again... Oh, I, I I forgot to mention. Neither of you have social uh, nine or higher, do you? No. no. Yeah, I think none okay, of us cause, did. Because that makes it easier to get into university. Okay. <sighs> well, we got uh, in just fine. We just didn't get back yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, All right. So you just like just like for Campbell, uh huh. You you now get to pick one skill at level zero and one skill at level one from that list. Interesting. Okay. So I was thinking of doing some sort of science. <sighs> Yeah, this is the hard part. We only get to choose two skills. Yeah. Okay. That is so when when you're looking at it, when you start your first career, most careers have what's called basic training, and they'll get several skills at level zero. University as your first career, you only get two skills, but you get one of them at level one, which is kind of the the big benefit there. Okay. And also the graduation benefits are really nice. Right. Okay. So I want to see I don't think I want another art skill. I've already got three of those. And there's different languages specialties? Yes. Okay. I don't think I want to care about those. <laughs> I don't think I want to care. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I'm going to do one of the sciences. Um, I'm thinking either uh, scion, scion, scion ecology or mm-hmm. psychology. So I will let you know, depending on how interested you are in the the official canon setting. Yeah. Scions, psionics are illegal. Oh. So, study, so studying that would be very interesting, and it's not technically illegal, I think, to study the concept. Yeah. But it is illegal to be a psionic. Weird. So that, that, that could be an interesting character con- concept right there, as somebody who delved into that a little bit. Yeah. Like that, that sounds obviously... like doing something naughty. <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of hoping I get psionics through this thing. So I, I it is really hard, I, right? But I, I at very least, if I if I'm not going to get psionics, I want to have studied them a little bit. So I'm going to put a zero into psionicology. Ooh. Okay. Just because, uh, yeah, she's a little bit naughty. Okay. Oh wow, Ryan, how I know. are you? <laughs> Um, let's we see. We broke okay. you in that Deadlands game. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> he loves a murderin'. <laughs> Actual quote from that recording. <laughs> it must have been, I, I, I listened to the, the one Deadlands episode that was out so far. Yeah, this is, this yeah, is I think, in the A3. third one. I was editing okay. it yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he loves a murderin'. He's so bad. He loves murderin' and stealing. Oh, so- my. Ryan, I bless you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now I want to I want to get a skill that I can be fairly useful in at level one. Mm-hmm. I don't think I want to go with because uh, I want her to be kind of uh, kind of book based a little bit. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe astrogation. That that is definitely a useful skill. Yeah, because usually with this game, you assume that the group has a ship. And to mm-hmm. go anywhere, you need somebody to plot the course. So yeah, I'm going to do astrogation uh, level one. Okay, that'll work. Uh, and then you also get to increase your education by one. Amelia, did you remember to do that as well? I didn't graduate. By... No, no, you get the education plus one just for getting into university. Okay, so the whole thing is plus one, or just the plus one right. to the to education the, to the stat. characteristic. Okay, yep. Cool. So like, if it was nine, it's now ten. I went from eight to nine, so now I got a plus one in education, which is pretty yep. sweet. Unfortunately, education is not what you need to graduate. No, but I already have a plus one in ed- intellect. So, yep, is that where I'm at right now? Rolling for graduation. Uh, once you've done the skills and increase your education, yep. I am going to. Uh, I'm using different dice. Does those <laughs> skew a little low. I need to get six or higher on the dice, and I I'm, believe in you. I'm hoping for a ten or higher. We'll see. That is an eight plus one, so nine. Okay, so you did graduate without honors. Okay. So now those two skills you picked become one and two instead of zero and one. Oh, wow. So now you're one in psionicology and two in astrogation. Sweet. Uh, your education modifier goes up another two. 
Dang. Oh, holy cow. <laughs> I'm up to 11. Does that give me another bonus then? Uh, I think. Not, no, 9 to 11 is the same one. Oh, okay. okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, and finally, this is something to just keep in mind for when we come back to you and you decide what career your character goes into. There's a list of things that you get a bonus to qualify for career wise oh. because you graduated. Nice. Dang, should have partied less. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. oh, that's I'm sorry, we forgot to do your event. Yeah, do an yeah. event. Oh, I, I don't I get think... an event. Yes, yes, everyone gets an event. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I, I apologize. That's my bad. Okay, so what is that? Is just this is 2D6? just a straight roll. Yep, two d six straight roll. That is a nine. Ooh, you develop a healthy interest in a hobby or other area of study. Gain any skill of your choice, with the exception of jack of all trades, at a level zero. Oh. Pick another skill, bro. Good God, there's a lot of skills. So what hobby did uh, Shiara get into? Okay, so I I have only looked at a small subset of the skill programs, Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of skills. Yes, there are. Is there a, is there a, like a a list of skills instead of just like go through the whole thing <sighs> with, with the specialties? I don't remember seeing one. Okay, so something. I mean, um, like there's just like the whole character sheet you can like. Right. Yeah, the character sheet has them all listed. It just doesn't include all of the different specialties. Yeah. Did you like persuade? Let's see. Not jack of all trades. Okay. What would be a good hobby skill? That's a good question. Gambler. Part, part of me is thinking maybe leadership, so I'm going to put that on the side burner. See what's going mm. on there. Model UN. Pilot. That might be a good one. Explosives, obviously. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. Yep. One of the sciences might be might be fun, but I'm not too keen on that. You know what? I'm gonna. Where was that one? I'm going to go with deception. Ooh. I want my character to be a little naughty. Oh, it's so naughty. Ryan. <laughs> Who this are is started you? at zero, right? I know yeah. I'm I'm trying to branch out a little bit here. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so since we kind of skipped that now now you've got everything and you can see that list of uh the, the careers you could get into a little bit easier, right? Yeah. So my character is not going to go into education. He directly goes into being a rogue. Ooh. Or he tries at least. Let's see if he makes it. Okay. Uh, let's see. The requirement is dex six, and I rolled a five with my plus one. I have six, so I made it. Nice. Okay. So by getting into being a rogue, first thing that I uh, that I need to do, because this is my first career, I go through basic training, and basic training is basically I get rank zero in in uh, all of the skills from the service skills table. So that would be. Rank zero in deception, in recon, athletics, and I'm going to put that in a different athletics because I already have one gun combat, and I'll I'll worry about what type of gun here, and probably probably like uh I think I'll I'll look at that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stealth and streetwise, but I already have streetwise, and because this is the basic training, it doesn't go up to one. Oh well. All right. So now that I've done my basic training. So this is, there are basically two spots, actually this is the major one, where the book is very unclear. All right. Uh, if you look at the chart, the, the, the graph thing there, or the, the flow chart, mm-hmm. it says, if this is your first term of a career, go through basic training, otherwise choose a skill table and roll. To me that reads, you don't get to do the skill table for your first career. Right. Is that not true? Well, if you look at the, on page 16, the... Uh, the skills and training, which is the same thing, it, it just says in each term you spend in a career, pick one of these tables. So it kind of contradicts itself, but I think it's more kind of balanced if you don't do the role on the first one. I mean, yeah, I so. wonder if it's just like a space thing that they didn't yeah. You know, yeah. spell it all out again. Yeah. But either way, so my character... Oh, uh, by the way, my character, he took the uh, the enforcer uh Ooh. assignment so he basically he got on with some criminals and you know roughs people up sometimes all right so the next thing i have to do is roll for survival uh and for the enforcer survival is endurance six plus and i absolutely got that 
So say your endurance is pretty high, right? Yes, I got a uh, a total of ten on my roll. Nice. So that means I get to roll an event. Wow. My event, I roll the six. You have the opportunity to backstab a fellow rogue for personal gain. If you do so, gain DM plus four for your next advancement check. If you refuse, gain them as an ally. I think he's young and he's kind of dumb, so he does it. Yeah. So, Always choose so. backstabbing, you guys. Always. Yeah. So within the first four years of, of get, moving away, Zach went ahead and backstabbed someone. Mm. All right. Uh, and so that will give me probably just automatic advancement. But uh, because I still have to do the advancement. Uh, for me, advancement as an enforcer is a roll of six plus on a strength. And you have an automatic plus four to this now? I have an automatic plus four, so okay. there's no way I can fail. I did roll 12 on the dice, but doesn't matter. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so this means I succeeded on advancement. And this is, this is basically what you guys are going to be doing for your next several terms. These are the steps. All right. So that's, you know. Um, when you make the advancement, then you move, to, you move a rank up and there's sometimes benefits for that. And I also get an extra roll on a skill table. So, as you can see, there are a total of six skill tables for every career. I have access to personal development, service skills. My education is not high enough for me to get the advanced education. I don't know why rogues, it's weird. But I can also do the enforcer one. Yeah. So I'm going to roll on personal development. For this one, you only roll one dice, one die. And I got a five. So that gives me a rank in melee. One thing you'll notice here is these ones on the table, they don't have a number by them. They are just, you know... Zero. Blank. Which means it's... No, no. If it doesn't have a number at all, there's no zero, there's nothing. Every time you roll that, you go up one from where you were. Oh, okay. Uh, With the exception of if you were at untrained, you go to one. Cool. So my melee is now one. So my character, in backstabbing, learned how to use melee weapons. All right. Uh, and the last thing is, because I went up a rank as an enforcer, I'm now rank one, and where it says ranks and bonuses, I get persuade one. Man, everybody's so doing so much better than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then that is the end of my first term. So now all of our characters are 22 years old. So here's a question. Yeah. Um, Like, benefits then, do you... The the benefits thing is when you finish that career. Okay. So, you know, if you stick in that career for a long time or choose to leave it, you get the benefits when you leave that. So is it beneficial then to do more careers? Uh, honestly... Well, but then you'd have to roll to enter it again, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, for every term you do in a career, you get a roll on the benefit table. Okay. So it's if you stick, as long as you don't oh, so like fail out of a career in it for four terms, you get to roll four times. Yes, probably okay. even more because there are other things that also give you rolls. Gotcha. Okay, I was thinking Rank, like, yeah. why wouldn't you just yeah. leave then and then? Okay, I got it. Yep, yep. So it's it's actually more beneficial to stay in the same career. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you like the systems discussed and wish to purchase them, links to the products can be found in the show notes. 
Also, check the notes or the website for cool stuff to go with each character, such as dice or mixtapes. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Neo Scum. Neo Scum is a narrative comedy podcast featuring five Chicago improvisers antagonizing their way through the role playing classic Shadowrun. It follows a group of misfits and outsiders. Z, the acerbic cyber troublemaker. Pox, the candy junkie klepto from across the pond. Tech Wizard, the public access actor with a petulant thirst for adventure. And Dak Rambo, the nastiest trucker this side of the Robo Mason Dixon. Join the irascible Neo Scum crew on a puerile rockin' road trip through a weirdo world of tomorrow, doling out street justice to every deeb they encounter, whether they deserve it or not.